Gneisenau, or Gneisenau, or Gneisenau, or Gneisenau, depending on which particular German you happen to ask, and I guess what phase of the moon it is, was the second of two Scharn horse class battleships, which were the first fast battleships of the Kriegsmarine. The technical details of the class available in the relevant video, linked below in the description. She carried the name of a Prussian field marshal, but more prosaically, the class carried the names of the two-ship armoured cruiser class which had fought valiantly at the Battle of the Falkland Islands under Admiral von Spee in World War I. Replacing the previously planned pre-dreadnought replacement programme, work on the Ersatz Hessen, as she was known on the stocks, began in May 1935. The ship was launched in December 1936, whereupon her slipway was immediately taken over by work on the carrier Graf Zeppelin, whose own construction had been waiting for that slipway to be made available. The ship then entered service on the 21st of May 1938. Initial sea trials with both ships showed the original straight stem bow had a habit of plunging straight down into the water and delivering copious amounts of the North Sea to the upper deck, the forward turret, and other places where large volumes of seawater were distinctly unwelcome, especially when the water began to pour through hatches and intakes into the interior of the ship itself. As a result, both ships were almost immediately taken back into dock, and a more raked and flared Atlantic bow, version 1.0, was fitted which resolved the issues a little bit, although this particular behaviour would never entirely go away. With the outbreak of World War II, she sailed along with her sister, something that would become a common feature of operations for almost her entire active career, with the objective of distracting British forces from the activities of other German raiders. In so doing, they encountered and sank the armed merchant cruiser Raoul Pindy in a now famous and somewhat one-sided fight. In terms of a distraction, you could say it worked, as they now had Hood, Nelson, Rodney and Dunkirk all closing on their position. However, this left them in a situation where Hood, Nelson, Rodney and Dunkirk were closing on their position and they had to hightail it for port, where Gneisenau, suffering storm damage, had her bow reworked again for even more flair and sheer. With the repairs and refit done, her next mission in April 1940 was to support the German invasion of Norway, again as a covering dash distraction force, and once again this worked in a kind of backhanded way, in that it led to the action off Lofoten, the two ships managing to draw in the battlecruiser HMS Renown, however leaving them with a problem that they were facing off against the battlecruiser HMS Renown, which promptly came charging through a rising storm with all guns blazing. Partially facing into the weather, heavy seas pounded Nisenor's forward turret, and Renown scored a pair of hits, one of which disabled the aft turret. Although Nisenor had scored hits on Renown, the British shells had significantly more effect, and with the forward guns almost unworkable, the German ships withdrew. For the second time, the ship found itself in harbour, repairing storm and now battle damage, and then, upon emergence, she hit a mine and had to go back in for yet more repairs. The next part of the sortie was somewhat more successful, netting a number of merchant prizes and kills, and then landing the next famous kill for the sisters when they came across the carrier HMS Glorious, along with the escorting destroyers Acasta and Ardent. This time, Gneisenau escaped damage. Scharnhorst stayed a torpedo, but overall the trade was well worth it. Her luck didn't last, though. In a recurring pattern, whilst trying to distract the British from something else, this time her sister's withdrawal for repairs, she succeeded just a little too well, and this time was herself torpedoed by the submarine HMS Clyde, making yet another visit to the dry dock inevitable. With this complete, she sailed with Scharnhorst as part of Operation Berlin, a major raid into the Atlantic, which was somewhat delayed by yet more storm damage that needed yet further repairs. Cooperating with the U-boats, a decent number of Allied merchant ships were sunk, but once again Gneisenor did her job a little too well. On the 16th of March 1941, whilst taking on survivors from her latest kill, she suddenly spotted a flickering shape against the setting sun, which turned out to be HMS Rodney barreling in at full speed. Gneisenor turned to run, but there was a long and anxious period where her speed was gradually creeping up, but Rodney was still closing in. She was technically just about within range of the 16-inch guns, albeit right at the outer limits of their capabilities, when she finally passed into a speed regimen where she was now moving faster than her pursuer, and she slipped away into the night. This incident persuaded the Germans to head for the relative safety of Brest, where the British promptly began a systematic bombing campaign to try and destroy them, albeit without any real success. More successful was an attack by torpedo bombers, which managed to land a single hit on Gneisenor's aft, 
almost sinking the ship, which was then returned to dry dock. Now, in dry dock, some bombs did actually hit, and between repairs to this and a minor refit, the ship was in and out of dock for much of 1941. In early 1942, along with her sister, the cruiser Prince Eugen, and some escorts, Neisenau took part in the Channel Dash, successfully evading British attacks, but managing to hit a mine and then an underwater wreck, meaning that it was back into dry dock yet again. Repairs complete, she was loaded for sea just in time for another air raid that managed to land a single hit that ignited a number of propellant charges, the subsequent explosion wrecking the forward turret and pretty much the entirety of the bow. The damage was considered bad enough that it was decided to just flat out replace the bow entirely and change out all of her armament for three twin 15-inch turrets. The surviving triple 11-inch turrets and her secondary guns were sent for use in shore batteries, where her aft turret still survives. Unfortunately for Gneisenor, the Battle of the Barents Sea and the subsequent arguments that resulted meant that all work on the ship was stopped, and so she remained in harbour in a half-finished state until she would eventually be sunk as a block ship at the end of the war, with the wreck being salvaged post-war over the course of several years. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.